Welcome to Thriving Tribesman. My name is Corey, your host, and I'm excited to be making this episode. Ah, oh, so gutted for the 49ers. I watched the Super Bowl yesterday, and it was an incredible, incredible game. Uh, so much to be said about it. But uh, leading up to the game, there was a lot made about uh, Purdy and Mahone, like the disparity between the two in terms of their earnings, which I thought was uh, absolutely insane. I mean, he's a 20, 24 year old, so only made uh, under 900 grand. Oh, poor Purdy. Uh, pretty sure he's struggling to buy bread. <laughs> Anyways, um, he, I mean, there was this disparity, and they're talking about how this guy has now managed to go to get it to the Super Bowl, or get his team to the Super Bowl. And uh, it was absolutely insane because as I was watching the game, uh, there was this assumption that the the guys were just going to, the Kansas Chiefs were going to just dominate because, you know, they've already won a Super Bowl already. And you've got one of the, <laughs> this really, really amazing, the best quarterback in the NFL right now was, was playing for you guys. So it pretty much looked as though Kansas City was gonna, just going to dominate and just really take over this game. But I personally haven't watched any. This was my only <laughs> game that I watched. So I don't know what was the history, but uh, I started... As soon as I started watching and I was thinking, well, the 49ers defense look absolutely mean and solid. So they really did not give any chance for um, Mahoney to actually uh, make any plays. And it, it looked really, really stifled. And it looked as though every time he was making a move, uh, in fact, on the, on the first quarter, he looked stifled. And the when, when um, 49ers scored, uh, when started scoring points, he, he started really trying to overstretch and overreach. But the one of the things that I was finding quite interesting was his body language, is that when things started going wrong, um, he he sort of he was, didn't have support. He didn't have, you know, his energy was all wrong around uh, what was going on. I think when things were going wrong, he should have been really taking control and like looking at the, the guys and saying, okay, this is how you know, what we need to be doing, or at least getting, if anything, look your partners in your eyes or your your, your teammates in your in their eyes and just say, we've got this, you know. And you could see that their, their body language was all wrong. So they were all looking away or looking down when they were waiting to go in as the offense team. So I, I thought that was quite fascinating. Um, and you could see this with Purdy, it was di different. Every time they sort of cut the, 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 the frame to him when they were waiting to go in, he was making eye contact, they were talking, and there was this sort of rallying as they go along. The only thing I thought was going to be an issue was if it came to a point where it was a, a really crunch point where they needed to make something happen. And it was some, like, I think that's what I, I thought, he, he doesn't have enough experience to take these guys over the line if they need him to make that last um, thing. So, for example, when uh, the, one of the, the when the kickers missed the, the conversion to make to add the points, that ended up putting pressure on Purdy, and then he he, he lost his state. So, uh, so you know, I think this is thing they call uh, the flow state. He seemed to be in the flow state majority of the game up until that point. He started. Uh, seeking passes that were not there. So I thought all of that was interesting. But from a seduction standpoint, and I know some of you guys are thinking, what does this have to do with sex in my love life? I just want, don't want to hear about the Super Bowl. Um, and some of you guys have probably no idea what the Super Bowl is because it's not something that most people watch. But uh, it's, it, I mean, it was an American football game. Pretty incredible. But what I found interesting is that when it comes to seduction, you still need a level of state control. And most people, when they start seducing, they, they get influenced by the reje rejection they've had before. And what generally happens is that when, uh, like this guy is the, the quarterback, is the guy who, who takes the ball from the line or he receives the ball from the line. And then he has to look for players that are running so he can pass the ball and really in the, they call it gaining yards, or I think you have to go over the gain line and then gain, gain yards. So when you throw it to try and get, get, some, get some yards to your teammate, it's a split-second decision, and that gap comes pretty... That, that 
past comes pretty quickly and can go pretty quickly. So you have to make that decision to make that uh, call pretty quickly. And there's so much pressure involved with it. Now, because there's so much pressure involved in making that pass and making uh, that run so that you can score the points, the calmer you are, the more in control you have of your state, the better it is to see that pass and make that decision. If you're a bit panicked, a bit under pressure, you overthink it, and then, because usually the, within one play, there's at least two or three plays that open up. So you either find your left wide receiver, or you look at your um, your right wide receiver. Sometimes you might have four options, probably. You might have a, a guy called a running back. That's a guy who sort of takes the ball from behind that scrimmage and then sort of try and run through the guys or at least try and run the ball. Uh, it's like a battering ram, basically. And then there's uh, you as, as a quarterback. You now have a chance to see an opening and then make a, a, a run for it. So you have all these options and these options open up and then close pretty quickly. Now, if you're second guessing yourself you end up not making a shot because all of a sudden nothing ever looks good you, you look you're looking for almost perfection whereas somebody who's in the floor state who's in control which is what happened with um the the kansas chiefs quarterback when things came to crunch time when everything was square at the end of the game when i started watching the overtime his state looked good he looked like a guy who was focused, who seemed like he's been here before and he was ready to make good decisions. And you can see his decision making when when he didn't see a play but saw a gap, he took the gap and then he ran what it looked like 20 yards or something. So you, you could see that the state he stayed he started controlling himself and he's really gone. And again, a lot of last time of it was the fact that um he's won Super Bowl, so he had confidence when he got into the overtime whereas the kid he seemed a little bit stifled now because now this is territory that he he, he has never been into and he didn't know so really when it comes to seduction you get these opportunities to really do something with your wife where you can connect where you she can see you in a different light when she can see you more as dominant or see you as a leader you've got all these opportunities that come but whenever your state is not in the right frame, or at least the right place, uh, you then tend to show it in a way that looks pathetic or looks unattractive. So you guys get these opportunities every single time. And this, it happens every single day. So sometimes I, I can find it that even sometimes when she seems upset about something that is irrelevant, she will still give you that opportunity to make that move. And we generally miss it because we're still upset about, or you're still, you know, in your head thinking about why she's upset or you in your head because she, she rejected you. You all get, you get, always get these opportunities. And it's really important for you to be able to recognize this ha happening. Now, for some of you guys, I know you probably don't like, don't know about American football or what's going on. The same thing ha happens. I was watching the Africa Cup of Nations. There was some football going on. And you could see that these guys, when um, when the, the game was 1-1, uh, and then towards the end, you could see uh, one of the teams that are getting a little bit nervous. They're overstretching, they're overpassing the ball, and they're not really taking control of the midfield. When the other teams started gaining confidence and started gaining control, you could see that they were more with purpose of their attacks. And just that, does the central midfielder, he looked very calm. He looked very chilled. He was asking for the ball, even though he was under pressure. He was like, yes, give it to me. Right now, I'm taking control of this game. And as soon as he did, you could see that they just looked, everybody looked confident around him and they managed to score and win the game. So well, congratulations to the Ivory Coast for doing so. But again, it shows you that there is a massive coloration to how you state control. And when you can control your state, you can do amazing things. And it's not just during sport, even at work, even when you're speaking to people in meetings, when you're dealing with different stuff, things in, in your life, when you can control your state, then you're more likely to make better decision making. And again, be able to really control the situation around you. Because sometimes when you can have a good state control, when this, uh, the, the surrounding is chaotic, 
then you can actually take control. But sometimes when the situation is chaotic or the surroundings are chaotic, you allow that to affect you in a way that makes you chaotic, which again is unattractive within any uh, interaction. So I'm not going to go any more about this, but uh, like I said, I, I was a little bit excited about the whole thing. Yeah. And this is my last, I promise, my last... American football reference up until next year, probably in February. I'll be, um, I'll be, uh, I'll be on it again. Hopefully, uh, Kansas Chiefs don't win it because I didn't want them to win it um, because of Kelsey. Got nothing against Kelsey. Well, he, he, it's because of his girlfriend. His girlfriend is uh, Taylor Swift, and uh, I dislike that woman because she, she's not good for for relationships is not good in terms of what she says about men and about relationships and how women stand and so on. So uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I dislike uh, I, I, I don't, ideologies and what she stands, what she represents and what stuff like that. <laughs> so um, my daughter the other day, cause I don't like Kate Taylor Swift. I was like, Oh my God, I, I, I'm such a good parent. I've raised amazing uh, kid because he was like, and I said, like, why did you like Taylor Swift? Because ah, there's just something about it that is not right. And then I was like, ah, oh, well, I think you, you you're very good at discernment. Um, you know, I want people that are role models to stand for women's rights, but also stand for relationships and being together and something that is good that's going to help society. Now, the fact that she's a businesswoman, I absolutely. <laughs> I, I I admire her business acumen, but I don't like her ideal. So uh, anyways, I'm going to knock it on the head here. And thank you very much, guys. Hopefully you had a really good weekend. Mine was incredible. And I mean, for us, we're decorating the house. So uh, there's so many things to do. So I didn't get a chance to uh, focus a little bit on, you know, um, the reignited men stuff and driving tribesmen stuff. But I'm back. It's Monday. Excited recharged. Here we go.